in explaining the Pasuk in Taylor that says that serving God is a matter that is very close, Beficho Bulvavcha, in your mouth and in your heart to do. The Al Tadebbe says that even in your heart, which means those things that a heart has to do, the emotions that a heart has to feel, in order to serve God properly, even that is close to every Jew and available to every Jew, and uh, and every Jew can reach that level of service. What is the heart? The emotions, love and fear of the heart are what make the mitzvah into a living mitzvah, that the mitzvah should be performed lishma, that the mitzvah should be done for the sake of God, not for one's personal sake, but for the sake of God. And in the last few chapters of Tanya, the Rebbe explained the various levels of Ahava and how they're arrived at and what the contemplations are that bring them about and so on. With love and fear, the mitzvah becomes a mitzvah lishma. You're doing it for God's sake. Now, in today's portion of the Tanya, for the seventh of Ir, it's on page Samach Dalid Amid Aleph, or 238, and it's the beginning of Pedic Memhe, the beginning of chapter 45. Here the Alter Rebbe is going to say that be, besides, in addition to, love and fear being the mo- the emotions that make the mitzvah into a mitzvah lishma, there's also a third emotion, and that is the emotion of compassion. And these three, love, fear, and compassion, represent the three patriarchs, Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Avraham was love, and Yitzchak was fear, and Yaakov was compassion. Let's, let's learn uh, Perek Memhe. There is one other way, and this is a straight way for every person to make his teda and mitzvahs, to do his teda and mitzvahs lishma, with the proper motivation, which is for God's sake. And, and this third way is called the straight way because kindness and severity or love and fear are extremes. Love is on the right, and fear is on the left. Chesed is on the right, Gvura is on the left. But this, the attribute of compassion, the midah of Rachmanus, this is in the center. So it is the straight center path. It is also the straight path for every person, because it is easier for the average person to feel compassion is easier than love and fear. Al Yadei, this is midose shol Yankiv all of Asholim. It is the attribute of Yaakov shehi midas arachmonus, which is the which is the mida of compassion leire b'machshafte, and he goes about this by arousing within his mind tchila. First, it begins in the mind. He arouses Rachamim Rabim Lufne Hashem Al Nitzu Telikus. He arouses before God, in the presence of God, a great compassion, a great pity for the divine spark, Hamechay Nafshei, which gives life to his soul. In other words, the part of God, the little piece of God that is his soul, Ashi Yorad What is the, the pity? that one feels for the neshama, for this part of God that is in the neshama, the the very fact that the neshama and this part of God had to come down from its source, which is the life of all life, God himself, where, where in, its, in its origin, this part of the Nisham recognized and, and, and saw how God fills all the worlds, the save of Kolalmin and surrounds all the worlds. The Kulakame Kalochoshiv and all existence is insignificant to him, to God, and in this source which is so great and so high, composed of these three levels of godliness. From this high place, the neshama had to come down, had to descend from its origin. 
and that alone is already a cause for compassion, the loss of its original innocent state. And this would be true even if the neshama came down only to the highest of the four worlds, even if it came down only to the world of Atsilas, or even in a stage before Atsilas, higher than Atsilas. The very fact that it had to give up and lose some of this godliness and some of this greatness, which was its source, that itself is a, is a cause of great compassion and great pity for the neshama. But what's more is that the neslabish b'mash fadichivyo, it comes down and is clothed, mean, meaning that it is caught up in the body, in the physical body, which is called the skin of the snake. The skin is what surrounds the, the soul, and the body surrounds the soul, and it's called the skin of a snake because the physical body is affected and is impure with the, with the impurity of the snake. And it is far from God with the ultimate distance. It is as far from God as anything can be, the physical body. And why is that? Because in general, this world, the physical world, is the ultimate in the lowness of klipa. Every world has its klipa. There's a certain amount of concealment. There are certain husks and shells that conceal the godliness in every world, in all of the four worlds, in order that the world could be a world and not be overwhelmed. But the klipa in this world is the lowest and the coarsest. So the body, being a physical body, being part of this lowest world, is also very and extremely far from God. So all of this is true of every human being by the very fact that he is born and is human. The fact that the neshama has to leave its original condition, and that in leaving its original condition, it is clothed and caught up and affected by the body, which is the ultimate in unholiness. And the pity becomes even greater. When he reminds himself, of all that he has done and all that he had said and all the thoughts that he had thought from the day that he was born which were not good even from the time a person is born there are actions and, and words and, and thoughts that are not good they are not sins the person is not old enough to be guilty of a sin but they are still the thoughts and the words and the actions themselves are not holy and the result of this unholy activity affects not only the body, not only the person or the mind which thinks the unholy thoughts, it affects God too. Because the king, God, is bound and tied by the ropes. This, this verse in, in Shira Shira is explained in the Zehar that rehotim, which means ropes, also means rihite mecha, by the, by the uh, passing thoughts, the fleeting thoughts of the mind, the unholy thoughts. So what are the ropes that bind, bind the king, God, or that part of God, that is, that is the, the life of the neshama? What binds God? to the unholy the un unholiness of the world it is the thoughts of the mind that are unholy because because as it says Yankev is the rope of his inheritance that there is a connection between every Jew who is called Yaakov and God like, like the connection of one end of a rope to its other end and in the example of one who, who tugs on the rope, by shaking the bottom end of the rope, the vibrations are felt also all the way to the top of the rope. And this is the idea of the Shechina being in Golos. In other words, the part of the Neshama that is in the body, that is affected by the body, is affected by these unholy thoughts or deeds or words and by the part of the Neshama below in the body being affected 
that effect is felt, the vibrations of that, is felt also in that part of the neshama, which is the other end of the rope, the highest end of the rope, and there there is a spark, a piece of God, so that God himself is affected by these unholy thoughts. So this is the compassion, the pity that one has to arouse over his neshama, that that part of God came down in, into the body, had to leave its original level. For that alone, there would be a great pain and great and great sorrow. For the neshama, it comes into the body, which is a further descent that 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 puts the neshama into a place that is the un, ultimate in unholiness. And that's even if he's totally innocent and had never sinned. There's a story about the Fir de Rebbe, when he came home from Cheder, that his father, the Rebbe Ashab, asked him what he had learned. And he had learned that day about how the Neshama, when it's told that it is about to be born, it is notified that it's going to be born, how it doesn't, it, it, its reaction is a very painful one. It doesn't want to go. It finds out what the world is all about with a whole lengthy description. So the, the Rebbe Ashab, who, who knew that the Friedrich Rebbe had a, a gift for painting a verbal picture um, and mental image of, uh, of an abstract idea, he asked the Rebbe, although he was still a child, he asked the Rebbe to describe it in his own words. And so the Friedrich Rebbe began describing all the various stages and the pain and the suffering of the neshama and its resistance to the idea of coming down into this world. And as he was describing it, the Rebbe Rashab asked him to stop because he couldn't take it anymore. He felt the pain of the neshama so deeply that he couldn't take it anymore. And we're talking here about the Rebbe Rashab whose heart was as broad as, as uh, the, the palace, as, a, as the gates of a palace, who had a great capacity for emotion, who had a great control of his emotions and so on. And for the Rebbe to say that he couldn't take it anymore, we, we, get, we can get an idea of how painful that pain must be. And that's all even if the person is perfectly innocent. And, and when you take into account the fact that there were words or thoughts or deeds that were not innocent, this intensifies the... The, the compassion and the pity for that part of God which is in the neshama infinitely more and so this is the compassion the midas rachmanus with which one serves God rachmanus for the part of God that had to come down and into such a low place and then be subjected to to, to sinful behavior as well Concerning this, it says Yoshev el Hashem v'irachamehu that he, the, the simple meaning of the verse is return to God and He will have pity on you. But the Alter Rebbe is saying that v'irachamehu can go both ways: return to God and have pity on Him. To arouse a great compassion for God, which dwells within us and with us. Kidrsiv, as it is written, Hashem itam b'teich tu masam, who dwells with them in their unholiness, so that even when a person is sinning, even when a person is living an un, leading an unholy life, God is there in His unholiness, in the person's unholiness, and that intensifies the compassion and the pity that we feel for God, and therefore the pasuk says, "Return to God, because you have, you have to have pity on Him." So when a person stops to think about what he is doing to himself, to his neshama, and his neshama is a part of God, this makes him want to do teira and mitzvahs, which is the only way to return to God. He wants to do the teira and mitzvahs because of compassion, because he feels pity for the godliness of his neshama, and that makes him do the mitzvah for its own sake. In other words, it's not a, it, there's no selfish motivation. He's doing it for God's sake, and his motivation is compassion for God. And as the Alter Rebbe wrote earlier in Tanya, that the reason that the mitzvah has to have some love or fear behind it in order to make it lishma is because you, one doesn't do something for a friend unless you have a feeling for that friend. If you're doing something for the friend and you have no feeling for him, 
then the motivation behind what you're doing must be a selfish one. When is the act intended strictly for the benefit of the friend only when you have a feeling for that friend? And the feeling has to be either love or fear. And here in Pedic Mem Hay, the Rebbe introduces the third possibility. The feeling can be also compassion. When you have compassion for someone, you feel compassion for someone, then what you do for him is for his own sake and not for yours. In today's Hayyim Yayim, the seventh of Ir, the 22nd day of the Eimer, the Rebbe writes that when we wrap ourselves in the talus gadol, in the, in the talus, it's not necessary to cover the head and, and face down to the mouth, as it says in the Siddur. Our custom is to cover the eyes with the, uh, with the, uh, with the upper part of the talus. During the days of Siddur, it is a custom to study the Gemara Seita, one page uh, corresponding to, to, to a day, one page per day. And this is all in addition to all the regular study sessions that every person already has.